Your Honor, if it pleases the court, I'd like to interject for a moment. What the hell was that? Did anybody else hear a parakeet? Or am I going crazy? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Chan. It's me, Whitey Duval. And a happy first night of Hanukkah to you. I am not, not Jewish. Neither am I, but that don't stop me from enjoying a holiday. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Front Row Cinema, a movie podcast for movie lovers by movie lovers. I am your host, TJ Trimboli, and with me, as always, my co-host, we've got youth basketball referee in the house tonight, uh, Mr. James O'Reilly. Let's uh, let's pump the brakes on the youth basketball referee. I steer very clear of youth basketball. I've never been anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell that lie <laughs> walking up and down the court, but I ain't buying it. <laughs> and each week we take a look at my 1,000 movies I've seen in theaters and we see how well it's aged, along with the hype surrounding the film, its box office analysis, and legacy in the film industry. So if you enjoy this kind of content, hit that sub button on YouTube, leave that five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's how you help the channel grow. Jim, what are we watching tonight? We're watching Eight Crazy Nights. That's right. Some might say a 2002 animated classic. Uh, although I don't know who those people <laughs> would be. <laughs> but yes, we're watching uh, Eight Crazy Nights, directed by Seth Kearsley, written by Adam Sandler, Alan Covert, Brad Isaacs, and Brooks Arthur, and starring Adam Sandler. Never a good sign when, when you're seeing four people on the writing team. Uh, just, just writing on the wall there. Yeah, no, it's never, like, that's too many people. Were they teams? Was there too a lot of cooks. teams involved? No, they all were like their own separate, like it was never like this person and this person. They all had their separate, uh, you know, little name there. I, I know Alan Covert is part of his like usual band of characters that show up in, uh, he was the guy from Grandma's Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say he's in Grandma's Boy. Yeah. Uh, they, I couldn't tell you who the other two people are, uh, but the fact that I they needed to call them in to, to top this one up, uh, never, never a good sign. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, but we bust out, Jim. Uh, we're busting out the DVD copy here. Uh, we got eight, the Eight Crazy Nights at DVD right here. Absolute classic. On the back, Anderson Jones from E! Online says, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll laugh some more. From E! Online. <laughs> That's the quote they needed to go to. They needed E! Online to drop the blurb, which just yeah, goes to just show you. It's such a weird 2002 kind of thing, you know? <laughs> It's so funny. And then we also got we got Bill Zwecker from Fox TV, the funniest holiday movie of all time. Of all time? Come on. Of all time. This must have been the first holiday movie he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> yeah, that quote's got to be out of context. There's no way. Is there a bunch of like dot, dot, dots on either side of it? No, no, there's not. Oh, my God. So that guy, that guy made a bold claim, but it's also Fox TV. So that's. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Take that, take that this with what you will. This movie is kind of right up Fox's alley. I, I, I can see that from them. Uh, but return to the back for a lovely log line. And it reads, When extremely disgruntled small-town guy Davy Stone faces another holiday season in his New England hometown, he does what he always has. He screws up big and lands in jail. Davy's old basketball referee, Whitey, bails him out with the bright idea of putting Davy to work doing community service. But Davy turns his sentence into a daily disaster for Whitey and the whole town. After a few surprises, including the mysterious reason for Davy's bad attitude and the reappearance of a childhood sweetheart, Davy might find a reason or two to change his ways. God, that was so long. <laughs> yeah. It was like pretty, a, yeah, it was a lot. I kind I'm not gonna lie, I kind of stopped listening like halfway yeah. through. <laughs> there was there was way too much in there for what essentially should only be like two or three sentences. Like and also like, is it really a surprise that his childhood sweetheart is in the town? Like she's just there. It's not like it's a surprise. She just lives there. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> she didn't really yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. They're like he's so hammered, it's such a surprise to him that he sees her there every day. <laughs> You're telling me you didn't leave this town either? What the fuck? Yeah, how did they avoid having this moment for so long in their lives, dude? <laughs> yeah, right? It's not like he went anywhere. The the fog <laughs> lifted of his beer-soaked brain. He was like, oh my god, dude, the people that I grew up with still live here? That's crazy. <laughs> Hilarious. Jim, did you see this movie in theaters? 
not in theaters but this is i definitely watched this like probably when it hit home video is my guess there you go i went i went with a my friend uh dave uh that, that we used to hang out with back in high school yeah. uh yeah we went we went to go see this uh together uh, and I remember as a kid, this is another uh, it's it's become such a running theme with these comedy movies that we're revisiting where you can tell these movies are made for just like 13 year old kids, because I remember loving this movie as a kid. I thought this movie was hilarious um, and I watched it now as an adult and uh, a few different thoughts there. Definitely, uh, definitely the comedy movies have aged the poorest out of all of these movies that we're revisiting. Yeah. I mean, that's one, that's a pretty astute observation that an Adam Sandler movie is geared toward, like, 13 and 14-year-olds. It's like, oh, you Go don't figure. say. He was really getting out of his comfort zone on that one. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I remember loving this, too, when I first watched it. Um, and I'm kind of probably, it sounds like I'm in the same boat as you, where this time around I was less impressed yeah, definitely leaves a, a taste in your mouth, and uh, that is for sure when it went along with the box office as well, because the adults around weren't biting on Adam Sandler's uh, tea that he was putting out this time. So, Jim, let's let's go ahead and let's dive into some box office numbers. Number dates, numbers, numbers, dates, array, dates, numbers. Show me the money. All right, so eight crazy nights. Opens Thanksgiving Day weekend. Oh boy, two thousand and two. So it's November twenty seventh through December first. This is the five day weekend. Uh, five day Thanksgiving weekend. It pulls in fourteen million. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's no budget listed here, so I don't have that. But yeah, only I've... fourteen million opening weekend. Is that the... is that the lowest of all time? So the the budget for this movie was thirty four million. I could say, um, our fourteen. So fourteen is not the lowest we've seen here. It's definitely towards the but. It's definitely top ten, um, but not the lowest. Our lowest opening weekend was actually Hey Arnold the movie with a paltry five point seven. This fourteen is good enough to tie it with enough, which also pulled in fourteen. Oh, okay. So it just beats out enough. Yeah, just barely. Well, I mean, I guess when you really got to break it down to the nitty gritty on the fourteen million. Yeah. By the way, I might have buried the lead here. Opening weekend with that fourteen million, it's down in fifth place. <laughs> a swing and a miss. So it's narrowly beat out in fourth place by another animated movie, Treasure Planet. Oh boy. That only pulls in sixteen point six million, which I was going to say like, like, is not great. And yeah, I remember that movie is kind of a bomb too, right? Yeah, animated movies did not fare well this season. Uh, maybe maybe the whole story of the month of December, uh, Eight Crazy Nights is going to fall in behind Santa Claus in the Santa Claus two. Dude, you you can't beat Christmas, bro. I, like I'm sorry. Yeah. That's the fifth week of Santa Claus 2, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's Santa Claus Santa Claus just owns November and just December, man. Fucking dunking on Adam Sandler right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh Santa Claus pulls in sixteen point nine million. And then the top two, we talked about Chamber of Secrets this week, obviously. Uh this was the third week of Chamber of Secrets, and it was beat out by Die Another Day. And not maybe it came in, in first. Man, what a what a collection of box office movies outside of Chamber of Secrets. Yeah, for real. Um, so going on to week two, we're dropping all the way down to seventh place already. Dear Christ. Uh, with a paltry 4.9 million. It's a 48.5% drop. Don't see this one sticking around very long. Yeah, and we we talked about a lot of these weeks with Chamber of Secrets, so I'm probably just gonna like fly through a little bit here. Okay. Um, in week three, it is already in eleventh place with oh, one point eight million. Ooh, well, so at least in the time spent in the top ten, it's gonna join some of the bottom of the barrel boys. Uh, so it's tying Kung Pao, Enter the Fist, and Super Troopers for only two weeks apiece in the top ten. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, and definitely recently, deserving for Kung Pao, but uh, that's a shame to see Super Troopers down there. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense for Super Troopers, and that was a really low budget movie, if you right? Yeah. Wasn't it like only yeah, like, like a it million was less dollars, than ten million, I think, right? Yeah, I think it was. I think they made it for like exactly a million dollars. Yeah, so uh, they're probably fine. Um, I'm gonna change it up a little bit here in week three. Okay. Instead of picking what our next movie might be, I'm okay. gonna just like beg you to beg past you to have not seen a movie (laughs) please tell me you did not see the hot chick in theaters oh jim you can rest easy tonight i did not see the hot chick in theaters (laughs) okay thank god because in week three the hot chick also opens in fifth place oh my <laughs> god you're telling me rob schneider got two movies in theaters in 2002 yeah, well, that's true rob schneider is the narrator in this movie yeah. god that guy's awful <laughs> um, <laughs> he's, he's so horrible i really dislike rob schneider just i mean he's t- like an actor more than anything yeah. else you know his turn as a stapler is pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah although yeah one of the better south park bits ever <laughs> rob schneider is a carrot <laughs> all right so then just some totals for eight crazy nights uh okay. it finishes with 24 uh, 23.6 million domestic oh my god and even better um two hundred and forty six thousand international jews across the world are like nah yeah they're like nah we're yeah. good yeah, I'd say Santa definitely wins by a bigger landslide in some other places <laughs> in the world. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that brings us to a worldwide total of 23.8 million. Dear fucking Christ, my God. That's got to be the worst, right? That, that is something No, nah, be- so still not the worst. The, the worst is still Hey Arnold with 15.2. Uh, so it's, it's not too far away from Hey Arnold, but it just manages to eke out. So it's sitting, so we've done, this is our 35th movie and it's going to sit in the 33rd position position, um, just ahead of super troopers and just behind black Knight. So oh, still wow. top five worst. So it still lost to black Knight, though. That's a victory. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge victory. Still losing. I'm the- excited about that. Yeah, still losing to Black Knight. Not enough to put up Black Knight. Shame that it's once again beating out Super Troopers, but, you know, well, it's, it is Adam Sandler, so he got at yeah. least a few people from America domestically to, to hop on that. It's insane that this movie, you said you saw it had a $34 million budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, so it, 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 it couldn't even, even make back uh, its budget. But how on earth did they spend $34 million making this movie? I don't, dude, it, it, the animation must have been because, like, you weren't spending. You probably spent next to nothing on acting, like, because you really only had to pay Adam Sandler. He plays the top three people, and everyone else is just is nobody. Yeah, so, like that whole thirty four has got to go to just to just animating it. But like, it's not even like the animation looks that great. So, like, you really telling me that it cost thirty four million dollars to animate this movie? Well, where would you put the animation, though, in terms of 2002? That's a hard question to answer, I feel like, because it's it's almost impossible to remember when animation wasn't so crystal clear. Oh, no, there's st- I mean, I guess, yeah, because outside of like what Pixar is doing, a lot of the other animated movies really just have this aging quality to them. Because even like, what's the other one? Like tre- you were, you're saying Treasure Planet's in it around this time too. And if you watch Treasure Planet, like even though it has like the like kind of like steampunk like um, aesthetic to it, yeah. that that animation style still also has not aged very well. So I guess oh, I really? get yeah, yeah. I mean, have you watched have you watched that movie anytime recently? It's been a while. It's probably been like six or seven years at this point since I've seen that. Yeah, it it it's you notice it too like that that type that animation also but yeah but outside outside of like a few movies especially in the early 2000s like you can tell that animation still like really finding its footing like pivoting from hand-drawn to 3d animation yeah. yeah yeah and i mean i guess like i guess what i'm trying to say is that 
the quality you got out of this movie might have been way more expensive to get back in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it could it, that could have cost them a, a pretty penny to pull to pull this out. <laughs> but yeah, what a bad decision that was, though. <laughs> like, yeah, to yeah, spend it wasn't thirty four million dollars on this movie. Yeah. Insane, and, li- and listen, it's it's bad across the board. I'm I'm looking at some critical reception here, Jim. Thirteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> It's a, it's sporting a 5.3 on IMDb, and I don't know how it pulled this one out of its ass. A B cinema score. Oh man, I feel like that's super low for cinema scores, though. It, it, it is super low for cinema scores, but st- but like it's like you see a B, and like you're just instantly like, yeah, it's not bad. But like I guess in yeah. the in the realm of cinema score, like a B is kind of like a death sentence. Yeah, that's how it seems so far. I mean, we've been doing that for like a handful of episodes, and I think the lowest we'd seen so far was a B plus. Yeah, which was signs, which is uh, still is. It's like, come on, come on. Yeah, totally. But yeah. um, yeah, and I just I don't know, like, what's a what's a compa- like a comparable movie that you could say was like a smash success? You know what I mean? What like an you mean like an animated movie like this? Yeah, like animated, um, raunchy comedy that was that successful to be like a bit like not even just successful, but like was like a hit, you know, sausage party. Okay, yeah, yeah, that That's one like was so, I mean, li- so much later, though. Yeah, well, I, I don't for raunchy, I don't really think there was any other like raunchy animated movies that were coming out around then. Yeah, that like, I can th- that I could think of. Their others. best case scenario was in their head. You know what I mean? I, yeah, and I guess it was just like, hey, we've got Adam Sandler. You know, he, you know, he, all of his movies do at least moderately successful at the box office. Like, it's a no brainer. Like, why haven't we thrown him in an animated movie yet? So I guess maybe like that was their idea. Yeah, but yeah, this I one comes so. off like way more mean spirited than like a lot of his like movies usually do like like his movies are definitely always childish with like potty humor but I, there was yeah. just something about this one that just felt way more mean-spirited than he usually does i don't know dude you remember billy madison all the like they like steal all the kids lunches <laughs> yeah but that's just like that's it still just feels like childish humor to me like in this one like they want this you to just laugh Robert and all just stand there like spraying a kid with a hose yeah I mean, I, yeah, I'm not saying it's great, but like when you watch that one, like it definitely just feels more like childish antics. Where in like this one, like they want me to laugh at an old man having seizures constantly. Yeah, you're all right. That's fair. Yeah, that's a pretty big difference. I'll give you that. <laughs> like, what was it at the end of this one? Like, he's having the seizure, and everyone's just like standing around laughing because he's like, "This is the happiest seizure of my life." And it's like, dude, what is happening in this right now? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bit weird. Yeah, it's a bit over yeah. the line. <laughs> like, it's such a weird bit. <laughs> so, like, that that's what I mean. Like those types of of joke. Like, it just seems way more like darker than his normal like childish antics are yeah for sure no i definitely get what you're saying more now yeah because even like because all of his movies have that bit of an edge to it because like it's like what big daddy he takes the kid down to like the park and they're just like tripping dudes riding rollerblades like (laughs) with big sticks but like those always have for some somehow always have like that lovable quality to it whereas like every time they makes a joke in this one i'm like dude like was he going through something like this is so unnecessarily dark (laughs) dude i this is also interesting you're pointing out like the dark side of it yeah um because i it's just like another way this movie's kind of all over the place right like it has like that really dark humor and then there's also like that scene at the mall at the end when all the like logos come to life and are like like that's like straight out of a horror movie dude <laughs> like... they're like singing to him to get his life together but it's all like really dark like red colors and stuff and it's like dude like what is, this movie is like everywhere yeah no so like it, you're right though like it has that kind of dark comedy and then there's some parts that are like i can't stress this enough truly horrifying <laughs> like just like just like f- totally freaking out watching it like what the what the fuck is happening right now um 
so like there's stuff like that but then at the same time you're right it's supposed to be like a silly comedy and then also it's supposed to be like a him like redeeming himself and getting back to like on getting his life back on track and it's just like it all feels like it mashes together in such a weird way and also like it's supposed to be like a holiday film like technically like well you want like you it's technically like yeah he's the ebenezer scrooge and he's gonna get a heart by the end like type of movie but then you're just loading it so raunchy to turn off the majority of the audience that's going to come to this and it's especially weird where they're like we're finally hanukkah is finally getting its due it's finally getting a movie we're going to make it the most raunchy movie ever that's going to turn off most of the holiday family you'd want to get from making a hanukkah movie yeah i mean yeah that's you're not you're making a lot of good points there <laughs> so it's like you you do get like raunchy christmas movies but there's always been so many like by the time you're getting to like really raunchy Christmas movies, we've already run the gamut of bringing in the holiday family Christmas movie. Well, uh, I mean, so like there's more you exploration. Say Christmas movie, the first thing that pops into my mind is Bad Santa, right? Like yeah. easily the first thing that pops into my mind. And that movie probably came out right around the same time as this, right? Yeah, I think it was around like 2002, 2003 that it, that came out. Did you see that in theaters? Come I did on, not. Please. I did not see that in theaters. <laughs> yeah, I, that I, might I'm, be my pick you missed. That I'm might be sh ashamed, ashamed to say I did not because that is yeah. a, that is a, quite a movie. But I would bet you that, well, Bad Santa has like an audience, first of all. And like you're saying, I don't know who the audience for this animated Hanukkah movie is. I don't like this like X, like this R-rated anima, an, uh, animated Hanukkah movie. I just yeah I exactly and I think that's its biggest sin that. is that you don't know like who is this movie for and then I'm just looking it up really quick I'm like very curious to see if Bad Santa cost 34 million dollars to make because I bet oh. you a million dollars it didn't <laughs> probably yeah I don't think it would either but I, I bet you I, I that movie I think was a runaway success too yeah, well, sure I, I don't know how successful it was. And well, maybe not run away. But... I don't want to dive too deep into it because I do, like, I really might pick this. But I will tell you the budget was $23 million is what I'm looking at Damn. right now. Yeah, look at that. Nice and right. modest. So they right made there. it for like one third less than fucking Eight Crazy Nights. <laughs> eight Crazy Nights. Yeah. And they, they knew exactly like who they were making this movie for. It was like adults that want a bit more of an edge to their christmas movie because it's almost like the bad santa you know what it is it's a crime movie centered around christmas like it's not about like some dude finding himself on christmas he's just a bad he's a bad dude he's oh, no, a but it is about him i finding mean yeah himself it, on it christmas. is that's he like, does that's all, it. It, it's a christmas movie there's it no is, way around it bad it is a christmas, a christmas movie. movie but like you're, you're pulling in people that like crime movies at the same time yeah it, I would say the biggest difference is that it knows when to really tug on the heartstrings and how, like where I buy into it when I watch Bad Santa, even with how over the top and insane everything else in the movie is, I'm still like, my heart is warmed when I see him yeah. like starting to turn, you know what I mean? So like to when me, he, that makes it a success. When he steals the pink elephant. It never feels as earned as that, is I guess yeah. how I would put it. And you could kind of see like now as we're talking about it, like there is those like parallels there of like these seedier guys like lost their way and are rediscovering themselves through the holidays but a crazy nights has no interest i feel like in bothering to tell a competent story it, it literally feels like they were just like we want to make a hanukkah movie we've got adam sandler we're just going to have him do adam sandler things and it, then we're going to put a bow on it and it's like yeah i guess man but like really because like everything in this movie feels so unearned like the fact that he gets the childhood sweetheart at the end after having done zero work is it astounds me every time when I, when I was watching it this time and like at the end like he literally has maybe three scenes with her the entire movie and then just yep. because he shows up and like speaks for whitey whitey's like puts their hands together he's like all right you two kids get out of here and they just keep holding hands and they're like yeah let's get out of here and it's like what no like you should still be like fuck that guy <laughs> yeah well <laughs> I mean, I'm with you, right? It's like, it, th that's got to be a big part of the movie if you're going to get there. But then there's also, like, not enough parts of this movie to go around for it to be a big part of the movie. 
So, I don't know. I'm with you, though. It definitely, like, feels forced because they don't really earn that part either. It's it's the only thing they really make any time for is just is him basically playing with himself because he plays all the three main characters. So it's like him and his interactions with Whitey and uh, and his sister Eleanor and all three of them are by Adam Sandler. So it's just like this is a movie just for him to just jerk himself off for like 90 minutes. Which, to be fair, some those are some of the best parts of the movie, <laughs> like with Whitey and his sister. Yeah, no, they're they're honestly like I could do more with just them and just get rid of Adam Sandler's character. Yeah, right. Make a movie about those two. I don't care about this like this lame ex ex youth basketball player. <laughs> like, Who's gonna uh, be a star? By the way, I just realized why this movie's animated, and it's because there's no way Adam Sandler would look cool dunking in real life. <laughs> Although I, no I, way. Isn't he like a really, apparently he's like a really good basketball player. Oh no, he I've got, I know that he plays basketball, but there's no way he can dunk, dude, right? How uh, tall yeah, is I, he? I I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Uh, yeah, no, de- definitely not. I don't yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's got to be like 5 5 8 tops. There's no way he can dunk. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. But um yeah, no, so, like, those are some of the best parts of the movie, though, with Whitey and his sister. And it's pr- that's probably my favorite song in the movie. Is what, the technical first, foul? Which, that's a plus about this, by the way. I like a lot of the songs. Not all of them, but there was a couple that really stood out. Um, but the one when, when he works, when he, they first take in Davey. And, yeah, that's a technical foul. The one technical you foul, said, yeah. yeah. yeah you know, that the... song rules. <laughs> Yeah, no, the music is definitely one of the highlights of this movie because, at, and and I don't know how much because like looking at it, they didn't really specify or whatever. Like you see where it's like music by certain people, but I'm wondering if Adam Sandler had any uh, input into the songwriting because he's he's a fairly decent songwriter. Yeah, there's a couple that I think like that one he sings toward the beginning. I think he probably had a hand in. It sounded like, very much like an Adam Sandler song. Yeah, but yeah, no, those those songs throughout the movie are definitely the highlight of this because they're all they are the majority of them are very catchy. And I was like, yeah. I was shocked watching it that I was like, wow, like it feels like they actually put thought into the songs and not the rest of this movie. Yeah, I wonder honestly how much of the budget went into that. What into just writing the songs? All right, we spent thirty, we spent writing, thirty like, million whole, on the like, songs, like music and lyrics for a musical. That's like a pretty like expensive. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. That's it. They're like, we spent thirty million on the on the music. We've only got four million left to make this thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that they spent. Maybe the cheapest million, animator you got. I wonder how much of the difference it makes up between that and Bad Santa's budget that we were just talking about. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it probably cost them like a few million. Probably. I will say my the the one time throughout this entire movie that I actually like laughed out loud was during uh the the song where he's going on all about Whitey, like at the like at the whatever the big event is at the end that he's he wants his award for and he doesn't get. And they do the yeah. like the but they're like bum bitty 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 bum bum. Oh and they yeah, they all have a story like, about Whitey. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, that's another like, highlight for sure. Yeah. And they do it like the like the Jewish like uh, kick steps. I that was the one part <laughs> yeah. of this movie that yeah. I like laughed out loud and actually thought was like really funny. Yeah, no, and it was like a really good song, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It sounded- what musical is that song? If I were a rich man, from it sounded uh, like it fid- could have fiddler, been that fiddler on the roof. Yeah, yeah. yeah like fiddler like on fiddler the roof. On the right? roof. That's what it's called. Yeah. It's, yeah, it yeah, sounded no, that... like straight out of fiddler. Straight out of that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I wonder uh, how great. that yeah, man wipes it. his. By the way, ass. how awful was everybody in that town that nobody respected Whitey? <laughs> like, oh yeah. Like. They, what pieces of shit human beings those people are if you interact with that guy and you see all he does for your community how would you ever be like an asshole to him you know well these are also the same human beings in town where one dude lost a basketball game and then burnt down davy stones's trailer <laughs> oh yeah dude i forgot about that like, what, like he lost what a, a basketball game thing to happen he burns down the trailer it's so silly that's so crazy and yeah that's just that's that's a great way to compare it to bad santa again where it's like just not really getting the job done 
because what the fuck even is that? That's just you being like, I need something really sad to happen here at this part. I don't necessarily care what it is or why it happens, but I just need it to happen because it's a holiday movie and he's got to get like the big gloom going on in the middle, yeah. you know? Yeah, and we need to set up. We need to set up the, the how important the like uh, the letter is to him that he hasn't opened. Which are, it's like such the the like pathos this movie wants is such is all just walking cliches. Like really, he's got the note that the parents wrote that he hasn't opened yet. Like and we we're, everyone's yeah. wondering what the angst is. It's like you, I know what the angst is. Like come yeah. on, and dude, you can. I don't even necessarily hate the idea that his trailer burns down and then the letter is in danger. So he like, you see that like visually, but I just like, don't make it because somebody lost a pickup yeah. basketball game. That's insane. So like, insane. Uh, maybe like Whitey, you know, convinces him to put up like some Hanukkah lights on his trailer or something. And then they like malfunction and burn the thing down. Just like something that like has anything to do with what's going on in the movie. Yeah it's it's all over the place and especially like that it's just you can't like do like this big scene with that or want like something serious like that to set up and then like in the previous scene it's like all right well what's going to lead to that it's like oh like not only did he lose the basketball game but now we have to have this fucking just nonsensical shot of the dude literally eating someone's jock strap it's like dude come on like <laughs> like with hey, that man. A bet's a bet. Yeah, but I'm just like, I'm like, dude, when I was happy and he was chewing that jock strap, I was like, I hate this movie so much. <laughs> yeah, it's really stupid. And although I, it's maybe putting the, them burning the trailer down into a different light, because, like, you didn't just lose a pickup basketball game. You lost a pickup <laughs> basketball game where, like, half of the other team was, like, eight years old. <laughs> the other half was a fucking degenerate drunk. <laughs> yeah. And you got like publicly embarrassed by having to eat a jock strap. So like, all right, maybe it's believable that guy just totally snaps and burns his trailer down. I also love that trope too. That's so funny. He's like, we've watched this this kid, you know, like Davey, who's like grown into an adult now, and he's literally like an alcoholic degenerate. Like all he does is spend his days getting hammered. But then you're telling me like he still got it in him to just like trounce in a fucking pickup game. Like like this dude would be a fucking bum. Like you just clean him up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're not necessarily wrong. Although those guys that they were playing looked pretty awful. <laughs> so... Pretty awful, but like you just watching shots of him just like running rough shit around them. And it's like, dude, there's no way this guy would move like this anymore if he's been a fucking alcoholic like since he was like 18 out of the fucking right, like right. foster All homes. Been doing is like drinking booze and eating food and like not playing basketball for like yeah. 20 years. We we open the movie. He's drinking like six scorpion bowls and running out in the tab like this guy ain't moving. <laughs> well, hey, if he runs out on enough tabs, though, you know he's at least keeping, <laughs> That's shape. keeping him. Some... <laughs> all that all that dining and dashing's keeping him fit, staying quick on his feet. Dude, that's another hilarious trope too. The the like you're such a delinquent i'm gonna send you to jail oh no put him into my care and then if he does one more screw up you'll go to jail <laughs> like yeah, what see, judge would I, ever be like yeah let's do that i kind of like it for this movie though because this whole movie takes place in this very oddly tightly knit community <laughs> you know what i mean no, I, I don't hate it either. Um, I just, I, it's always such a funny trope when it shows up in movies when they, when they like go that route, as if like any judge in his right mind in the real world would ever agree to that. They'd be like, no, this, this guy's going to jail. Like, are you crazy? Like, he, 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 he dined and dashed when he was hammered. He stole a snowmobile, like wrecked public property going through town. He destroyed our goddamn ice sculptures. Like, this guy's going to fucking jail. Yeah, well, what were the, how many years in prison was he going to get? They talked about gonna it a couple times. They were going to give him 10. 10 years, right? Yeah. yeah they were going to give him 10. They were throwing the book at him. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, if you're facing 10 years in prison, just being like, okay, yeah, we'll let you around children at a basketball game is, like, not how it would go. <laughs> and that's not, I'm with you there. But like, put I you just, in the like, care I of an like elderly man with dementia. It, like, it makes the point early on that, like, the judge who would be presiding over this has known this dude since he was a kid, you know what I mean? And yeah. he's, like, invested in him, you know, like, as a person. So, it like, I think it 
it's maybe one of the few things that makes any sense. <laughs> it's one of those like middle America idyllic towns. Where it's like everyone knows everybody and everyone's just trying to help each other get by. Yeah, exactly. We're all just going along to get along. <laughs> but none of us can pay any respect to fucking Whitey. Yeah, and that, that's the part that makes me the most angry, honestly, yeah, is that in that kind of town, Whitey is just, like, treated like dirt, because there's just no way it would go down that way. I mean, this is also, um, this is the same town that even after they give him an award and he starts having a seizure, they all just stand around and laugh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, so, like, I definitely don't like that part of it, but I just, I don't know, I like the kind of, like, the homesiness of it. I mean, it's definitely got like its moments, um, but a as a whole, uh, this is this this is joining uh, an elite list of movies that we've done so far, Jim. Where I I, I never want to watch ever again. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm never watching this again. I'm like I'm kind of disappointed that I had to watch it this time. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, last thought. Right. Okay. In that kind of small town somebody's definitely done way crazier than dine and dash and steal a sm snowmobile drunk and not go to jail for it right like it's kind of I, like, I mean I, I feel like that's like a in like rural somewhere that's like just like a normal tuesday they're yeah. like oh davy stole the snowmobile again <laughs> like, they're like oh it's tuesday that means davy's probably posting up at the chinese restaurant doing his scorpion bowls we better post up outside yeah, right. and get ready like like people are probably like like in this town are probably like hiding the keys to their snowmobiles on Tuesdays because they're like, oh man, Davy always gets <laughs> like he's out and about, man. Yeah, that, 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 that you're a Davy on Tuesdays. That does make sense because you even see it now in like uh, any town that you live in. Like you every you live in a town long enough and you know there's like the one or two dudes that are always just like strutting about that everyone knows their deal at week over week. Yeah. And like maybe the guy whose snowmobile he stole like went to fight him and then just like the cops never were involved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they just had like a little dust up and then like tomorrow they're like at breakfast at the diner Listen, like, hey, how you doing? They were like, we can excuse the drinking and the stealing of my snowmobile, but I cannot excuse you destroying our great ice sculptures at this great event <laughs> yeah. for the holidays. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. The ice sculptures are pretty bad. <laughs> That's that's, that's pretty tough. That's huge destruction of property. Like, if anyone got hit with any of that ice, like, that's damages right there. Like, he's looking at a list yeah. of Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, you're making good points. You're making really good points. But yeah, all it tells me is this is a town I, I don't want any part of. Yeah. They got the so fucking, the, the deer, the deer are always hanging around doing weird things. They're eating shit. <laughs> And that's I, don't know. I don't really have much else to say about this movie. It yeah, feels I, like there's one that's it's just it's like an hour and 16 minutes long. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you for being only 76 minutes long and while also feeling like two hours sitting through it. So th thank you yeah. for that. Eight crazy nights. Just like, man, maybe if you put like 10 or 15 more minutes into it, it could have been better. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Or maybe, maybe put like a, even a modicum of thought into it outside of the music. Like maybe we might have had something. Yeah, but alas, we did not, uh, and that's about all I got on that movie, Jim. Uh, I I do look forward to seeing who you could pick for our IMDb deep dive if if it's not the Sandman. I think it's. I'm just gonna do the Sandman because I'm I, I, I'm not really sure when he'll come up again. If I'm being totally honest, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't. I can't tell the next movie after this of his that. Because I, th I I honestly think this we're right around the time where we're just jumping off ship. Yeah, I mean, I think his movie career slows down, but we'll talk about it because that's who we're going to do. <laughs> ready. I'm ready for it. Cue him up. Let's do him. Um, I, I feel like the best place to start is his run on SNL. Okay. Because he has like a pretty successful run on SNL. He's got some pretty great famous characters like Opera Man on Weekend Update. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Let's see how many years. Is that's where you got to start, right? It was it was basically from Saturday Night Live. I mean, that's the only place I know him from. Like, that's the earliest thing that I yeah saw him in. Like, ever saw got him. some stuff in the eighties, but it's like nonsense. It looks like it's like one episode of like an ABC. Oh, he played a drug dealer in an ABC after school special. Ah, oh, there we go. In the Sandman dealing drugs. Uh, he got it. He was on four episodes of The Cosby Show from 87 to 88. 
No wonder he became a drug dealer. He played Smitty. Smitty. Hey, hey. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, SNL is really the first big thing that I see here. And he's on <laughs> SNL from 1990 to 1995. He gets 87 episodes. Damn. Okay. That's a, that's a good run. Yeah, that's a sick run for SNL. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, he's like, a lot of the stuff I remember about him is from when he was on SNL. I mean, I know I... I've only seen skits and bits and pieces of Saturday Night Live throughout like the ages. I've never, I don't think I've ever actually watched an actual episode of it in my life. Really? Yeah, no. Yeah, I've only seen like, if somebody was like a skit was really good, I'll just watch the skit, but I've never watched like a full episode. That's fair. I used to, when I was homesick from school, I used to watch it. It used to be on Comedy Central for two hours. Interesting. But uh, have you ever seen him in the Canteen Boy skit? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of his. I've I think the 90s is is probably where I've seen the most skits because that's when it was like really hitting hard with everybody that was in it. Or like the 90s yeah. or to the early 2000s like when you get like Will Ferrell and all them on it too. Yeah, definitely. So all right, so SNL's in there in the mix from 90 to 95. Uh he's going to go on a really sick run of movies here. I'm but I want to bring this one up first. Who is he in Coneheads? Did he have a big part? He's credited as Carmine. Carmine Wiener. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I dude, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw Coneheads. <laughs> I don't remember when I saw <laughs> Coneheads last either. Um, but then he's got a pretty sick run of movies here. Right. Okay. So 1994, um, Airheads. Oh, dude, I love it. 1994. This is in the middle of the sick run. A mixed nuts. I've never heard of that. Never heard of that either. Uh, 1995, Billy Madison. Okay, yeah. That was, that's, this is where he's about to hit, like, his stride, too. Right, and 1996, Happy Gilmore. It's, yeah, and that's that, like a, that's I mean, a two that for right, right there. there. From 94 to 96, that's like peak Adam Sandler, right? Like, yeah. there's, it doesn't get any better than that. I like how you so haven't even Adam tried Adam. to do this or that, since we know A Crazy Nights would never get chosen. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it against any of those movies. Definitely <laughs> not. There's some more that I'll have later. I mean, do you want to talk about any of those three? You, it sounded like you had something to say for Airheads. No, no, I do. I love I love Airheads. But you could tell, like, it seems like his run really starts with Billy Madison because I feel like Airheads, while he's great in it, it's not really like an Adam Sandler vehicle. No, yeah. I mean, he's not the lead, definitely. Yeah, but like, it's a great, a it's a great movie. Part yeah, but movie. he's, yeah. I mean, it, he's one of the Lone Rangers, dude. It, it, it's a classic. <laughs> Fucking Kramer just living it up in the vents that entire movie. Yeah, yeah. No, Airheads is so great. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore are really the first movies where he's the lead. Um. Then, all right, this one I'll play this or that on. Do you take yeah. Eight Crazy Nights or Bulletproof? Oh my God, both terrible movies, but I would still take yeah, Bulletproof. That's why we're playing it. I'm going to play it on all the terrible movies. Yeah, because we have a terrible movie to do it yeah. against. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. No, I, I would still take Bulletproof. That's at least, like, a, at times enjoyable. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I might take Eight Crazy Nights just because it's only an hour and 16 minutes. My Bulletproof God. was rough. That's... <laughs> that was them, like, he, that's more of like an action movie, right? Isn't yeah. it him and and who else is in it? It's him and uh, Damon Wayans. Yeah, one of the Wayans brothers, right? Damon yeah. Wayans. Yeah, he was trying to get in that that action comedy that that would become so popular with so many people. Yeah, I mean, right? That movie feels like in some ways a spiritual sequel to uh, the Last Boy Scout, which was also Damon oh, Wayans, but yeah, with, that was um, a good one. But with Bruce Willis. What's his name? But Bruce with an Willis. actual, yeah, an actual action star. Yeah, I wonder. Did he write Bulletproof? No, he did not. There's no way. Not Adam Sandler. No, I know not Adam Sandler. I, I, you're thinking Shane Black. Yes. Yeah, no, dude. Just Shane Black's not touching know. that. I just got to see, dude. Okay, no, he didn't. He did it. All. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, Bulletproof's terrible. I am taking uh, Eight Crazy Nights. Ah, uh, 
<laughs> no, I'm taking a crazy nights over bulletproof. I might need to watch bulletproof again. No, you don't. To really confirm that. <laughs> no, you don't. But that seems like a really dark road to go down. So yeah, that sounds. Yeah. Do once, that. once, once you're recomparing horrible movies, we've hit the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I really need to figure out if I like bulletproof or eight crazy nights better. I just need yeah. to. I don't know why. It's like, what are we doing at that point? <laughs> All right, so then 1998, better movie, The Wedding Singer. Oh, classic. Yeah. Um, It looks like he plays the devil in Dirty Work, but he's uncredited. That's that Norm MacDonald movie. And yeah, like, I think yeah. it's Norm MacDonald and Artie Lang. But they were, uh, really also, 1998. Them. So, 1998, big year. Maybe, yeah. maybe I was wrong about peak Adam Sandler. So 1998, we had The Wedding Singer already. He does that uncredited thing in Dirty Work. And then also 1998, The Water Boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think 98's got to be that year. That's his year right there. Playing Bobby Boucher. Remember when the Mud Dogs came back at halftime and won the Bourbon Bowl? 1999, Big Daddy. Ooh, another clad. That that might be my favorite Adam Sandler movie. That might be his best movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of with you on that one. Yeah, that movie's so good. <laughs> uh, 2000. This one's near and dear to my heart. Little Mickey. Oh, that that's an entertaining movie. I do like that movie. I yeah, I enjoy it. It's I mean, it's not yeah. as good as Big Daddy. But... Yeah, no, not not nearly. But it's it definitely has a lot of funny parts in it. All Fucking right, so, Quentin so Tarantino. Far... Though. It sounds like we're taking late nineties Adam Sandler over over like mid nineties Adam Sandler, right? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I think I think that ninety eight ninety nine run is that's that's peak right there. Yeah, and it doesn't honestly doesn't get that much worse. I mean, Little Nicky's <laughs> probably a downswing. I really like it though. But then in two thousand and two, he comes out with Mister Deeds. <laughs> that that's I like that movie. I don't hate that movie. I like it. I think it's funny. Yeah. Um, and then also what else in 2002, did he do? our movie this week, Eight Crazy yeah. Nights. And yeah, this is so I think where things start to take a little bit of a tailspin. We have to call that <laughs> one a wash there. I think things start to go downhill. Yep. Um, cause Jim, Jimmy has another credit in 2002 to really seal oh, the deal. Punch Drunk Love. How did I miss that? Yeah, I was going to say, probably his first turn as... A, a wanting to be a respected thespian here yeah it's like a more dramatic one right i don't think i've ever yeah. seen that movie that's a uh, the pta movie paul thomas anderson uh who did uh boogie nights i know who paul thomas anderson is <laughs> all right all right i'm just telling um, it for the people at home jim god yeah boogie nights <laughs> among other movies among other movies yeah uh i i only watched punk drunk love once i was not the biggest fan of it but I only, I would have to watch it again because when I watched it, I was it was I think we were in high school still when I watched it, so might not have been yeah. mature enough to to have really, really understood its themes. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting. Like he was in such a sweet spot, and then you're right. Like he does Punch Drunk Love the same year as Mr. Deeds and A Crazy Nights, which are both like seemingly out of the thing where he succeeds at. So and then don't forget he's got he's got a cameo in the comedy classic. The hot chick. I know. Yeah, I was. I was gonna skip the hot chick. Yeah, because he's uncredited. He's listen. You might get to skip it on the list here because I didn't see it in theaters. But you will not skip it for what he played. What was it? Mum, Mambuza Bongo guy. Yeah, sure. Is it, how is he's credited? <laughs> Two thousand three anger management. Did you see that movie? What did you think of anger management? Uh that yeah, that one's got its moments. I don't hate that movie, but I think I like that movie more because of just how like bat shit insane jack nicholson goes in that movie yeah i mean that's fair dude I, this is so interesting i keep trying to count adam sandler out and every time i'm like oh yeah no that's when things are gonna go bad it's like actually he kind of like he kind of no, i don't i don't around. think he really starts to like dive off into like putrid territory until the late 2000s like early 2010s is really where like every single one is just an outright stinker yeah, um, because two thousand four, fifty yeah. first dates. You take Dude. that over eight crazy nights, right? Absolutely, I, that's one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies. I I love fifty first dates. Yeah, another turn into the dramatic in two thousand four, also with Spanglish. Oh, there was a movie. Um, 
This he's got such an interesting filmography, dude. Then in two thousand five, he makes the remake of The Longest Yard. So hilarious, like which is just another which is, like. It's so amazing to me that, that I saw a few weeks ago of them remaking A Fistful of Dollars, and then also the Gladiator Two trailer. It's just this Longest Yard remake is just another. It's more salt in the wound, bro, of Hollywood. <laughs> it's crazy that they were like, we had this movie with Burt Reynolds. This really like just like heavy hitting movie, prison movie. It's we're gonna, we're gonna... one of the best sports movies of all time. The original yeah. Longest Yard. It's like definitely in the top five. And they're like, we, we should remake it. And they're like, all right, well, who are you thinking? Adam Sandler. It's like what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, not only not only Adam Sandler, but we're gonna we're gonna somehow find a way to get Burt Reynolds to come back, and then we're also gonna litter it with wrestlers. Yeah, it's just so goofy like and adam sandler doesn't have like br- br- they want me to believe he's Burt the Reynolds has more charisma in his like pinky finger than adam sandler could ever dream of having in his entire life you know what i mean yeah man i did not uh, see it did not see the longest yard in theater yeah so jim i didn't see any the only movie that we've done so far that i that i saw in theaters after eight crazy nights is 50 first dates interesting yeah so, yeah, you so i didn't see it yeah so we didn't see any of these um all right i'm interested to see what you think of this movie there's also another uncredited cameo in a rob schneider movie deuce bigelow european gigolo in 2000 um, jim jim uh i know I, I, we saw i <laughs> saw that with you i know we have to do it i know <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's gonna be a uh it's gonna be an episode i said it earlier this week man that guy sucks i'm so (laughs) not excited to watch that movie although there's a lot of other funny things in my memory from that norm mcdonald's particularly good in that movie if i remember correctly so you might get a few moments out of it uh so but then 2006 this is an interesting one to me what did you think of the movie click Ooh. uh i i enjoyed click yeah, Click's like one of his better movies, I'd say. Yeah, it's def- like definitely for Big like Daddy. the Big Daddy's the mid- still better. Yeah, Big Daddy's still like the I don't think we've seen a movie so far that tops Big Daddy, but I think Click is is very good for his like run of two thousand movies that he's done. Yeah. Uh another one I'm pretty sure we're gonna be watching on this podcast at some point. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Oh <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, we went and saw that one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know, dude. I feel like we're starting to get into the I'm really tired of Adam Sandler territory. No, yeah, we're definitely getting there. I don't know. He's got he's got one more that even though it's definitely me was also 2007 with Don Cheadle, right? Oh, yeah. It's like the 9-11 one, right? The 9-11 one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a that's a depressing movie. Dear God. I never watched it. I couldn't do it. I I watched it. I I didn't see it in theaters. I, I did watch it like way later but i remember i was watching it, i was like dude why why did you make this <laughs> and i think so, for now let's stop at i now pronounce you chuck and larry <laughs> or do we want to do... <laughs> just I'm keep going maybe we pick this back up when we get up to i now pronounce you chuck and larry right. or do we want to do kevin james when we get yeah no to... <laughs> do kevin yeah just just keep blasting through adam sandler because right. because the other adam sandler movies that we're doing have enough people in them that you that we can do somebody else all right, let's do it this way. Now that we're going to be into all thumbs downs, let's just say thumbs up, thumbs down for each movie okay. we go through. Okay. You're going to hate me for the next one you're going to say. I know. What you're gonna, I know. Don't mess with the Zohan. Dude, two thumbs way up. Thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, dude, that you don't like the story. Fizzy Bubble? <laughs> no, I don't like that movie at all, dude. Uh, bedtime stories. Uh, ooh, uh, I give that one a thumbs up. I will say thumbs up. Funny people. Oh, two thumbs hard down. Down. Two thumbs down, yeah. Two thumbs uh, way down. Grown ups. Oh god. This might be the bottom of the barrel, dude. Definitely the bottom two of the thumb down. down. A hard thumb down. <laughs> I'll save I'm not gonna do this one because I'll save it for Kevin James. <laughs> oh, man. oh I know which one you I can already see which one you're talking about. Jack and Jill. Thumbs dude down. i don't i don't have enough thumbs to put down on that one yeah that's my boy i never saw this one. Oh, that movie's terrible to do thumbs down hard down 
Uh, ooh, Hotel Transylvania. I actually up? have not watched any of those movies. Really? Okay, yeah. I will thumbs up the first Hotel Transylvania. Okay. Uh, Grown Ups 2. <laughs> Oh, good thing I got two thumbs, baby, because they're going yeah, down. Thumbs down. Uh, this one's got, oh, Jim, this one. Blended? He, ma- he makes a comeback here. Blended, Drew Barrymore, thumbs up, baby. Don't they make a sequel to that, too, at some point? No, no. We haven't, we haven't been lucky enough to get a blended sequel yet. What's the top five? Is that like, he's credited as himself. Never, never even heard of that. You don't click. I'll click. I wasn't clicking. <laughs> I was kind of so up, dude. It stars Chris Rock, Rosario Dawson, and Gabrielle Union and follows New York City comedian and film star Chris Rock, who has to confront his past and comedic career while doing an interview with a journalist. Oh, I've heard of this movie. Oh, so he just plays a random person that shows up in it. This is a Chris Rock movie. Okay, yeah. Well, he's credited as Adam Sandler. Gotcha. Okay. Um... Uh, like totally that's the name of that. the character like that's not like i don't mean like I, that's I what it, it says on his sad card yeah no i got it thank you <laughs> uh all right the cobbler never even heard of that movie i've it's a netflix movie i've never seen it but i've seen the like caption for it a bunch of times uh pixels oh two thumbs down thumbs down hotel transylvania 2 thumbs up. Uh, I, all right i'll take your word for it i think hotel transylvania 2 is the peak of the hotel Transylvania series honestly don't watch hotel transylvania one who cares watch hotel transylvania <laughs> all right i'm I'll, telling I'll you my, it's really good i'll do my deep dive into the into the franchise uh the ridiculous six get out of here obviously thumbs down. thumbs down it's one of the worst fucking things ever the do-over did you remember the do hard hard thumbs down that's the one when with david spade david spade meet up at like a at like their high school reunion, right? I think. Or they like fake, right? They like fake their deaths and like have to do like yeah, a whole. Yeah, life. but yeah, they like yeah. went to high school together, and then they end up like faking their deaths and like going yeah. on a run because Adam yeah. Sandler's like a spy. Dude, yeah. that movie came out eight years ago. Holy Get out of here! Get it. <laughs> Just came burn out Hollywood in to the ground. Get I feel out like here. I watched that on Netflix like yesterday. Oh my god, dude. Um, all right, the Meyerowitz stories. Never heard of it. I've never I've I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. I think this was nominated for a bunch of Oscars, honestly. Oh, so that's his uh doing uh yeah, I can act. Yeah, I mean this is kind of like the first one I remember being like in his comeback for like actual like dramatic acting. And then there's yeah. another one coming up that I think was a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah, I think the one that everybody really uh clings to. Uh Hotel Transylvania three summer vacation. <laughs> big thumbs down. Oh, all right. So that, yeah, they're so jumping off the... out of that movie. I Ooh. walked out of that movie. I was just over it. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> so I'll have to avoid that one. Yeah. Watch Hotel Transylvania 2. Not one, not three. Just watch two. You got it. <laughs> yeah. Never going to happen. Um, 2019's Murder Mystery. Never watched it. That's the, the him and Jennifer Aniston, right? Yeah. I think they made a sequel to it, too, that like just came out never watched uh, it and then this is the other big dramatic role that i think he's pretty well known for uncut gems in 2019 i don't have enough thumbs to put up for that movie that movie is so good yeah i love those directors too they're really great uh yeah the uh the uh, safety brothers right i think is yeah they're brothers yeah. I, I wasn't gonna try and pronounce their name yeah <laughs> Did that movie they watching have... that movie made me so mad too because i remember watching it and i was like motherfucker you could act this whole time no, I don't know if he could the whole time. <laughs> I think I think maybe it took him a while to get there. But uh, those guys have a really interesting criterion interview that they did with like Ari Aster, where they like yeah. just like are having a conversation. It's really cool, like listening to them talk about movies. Um. All right. So then, there's like a few shorts in here, a mini series. Have you seen Hubie Halloween? I don't know what the fuck that is. Unfortunately, yeah, that that's fucking that. that this is where you were really in just absolute putrid territory. Yeah. So I mean, it took him a while to get there, dude, and he's definitely got another uncut gens up his sleeve somewhere. He he floats in and out where it's like just when you think I'm out, like I'm gonna give you one that pulls you back in, like, and then you're gonna watch like six more that you're gonna hate me again, but like I'll I'll get you back on one. All right, so who cares about the rest of these movies? Here's my question to you, sir. Okay. 
do you think that Adam Sandler, absolute Absolute. jester of an actor, eventually wins an Academy Award? I mean, honestly, I, I, he should have been nominated for Unput Gems. Like, I think that, I think, I think there's a possibility out there, but I could see it going either way. I could see him never hitting like another like big peak like that where he gets that like awards buzz, or I could see him like managing to work with the right director that that gets him one. But I don't know. It could go. It, it could go either way. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucking insane though? It would if be he insane. Won an Oscar. It would, that I mean, so nuts, dude. If he won for Uncut Gems, I would not have been like. That's insane. Like I would have been like, Wait, yeah, that's dude, what like, I definitely. mean though. Like he's got the chops, like in the right conditions, it could happen. Yeah, he just he just needs the right director behind him. And he he totally can do it. Cause like when he wants to turn it on, like it, the dude dude can hustle. He's a, he can act. How do we get this guy in a Cohen Brothers movie? That's how he does it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Get him in with something what's, in Wes Anderson. What's the movie? Coen Brothers movie starring Adam Sandler look like? I <laughs> uh, do. I I don't know. That's a wild. That's a wild universe yeah. to live in. I really like Hollywood. I'll forgive you for a fistful of dollars and the longest yard and and all of that if you just give me just a Coen the... Brothers movie starring Adam Sandler. There you go. And I think uh, I think that's good enough to put a bow on it there, Jim. Yeah, that's about right. I think yeah. we're. Uh, I think it just about ready for those yeah, just about ready for those star ratings yeah i'm not gonna play the drop because uh, yeah, i still yeah. only have the one ebert drop and he yeah. says it's a great film and spoiler alert i don't think this one was a very great film <laughs> this one definitely not deserving of the illustrious roger ebert drop uh so jim let's uh let, let's see how low we can go in this conga line uh let's hear final thoughts for eight crazy nights I'm going to give it one and a half stars. Okay, 1.5 from Jimbo. So it looks like we won't be, the stars will not be aligning on us here because I'm going lower, Jim. I'm giving this bad boy just a solid one just for the, just for the music and for that one laugh that it got out of me. And they're lucky they got that. Yeah, the music's most of my score too. Yeah. All right, so with a, a 1.5 from Jimbo and a 1 from me, good enough to give this bad boy a a 2.5 right there, which is, uh, it, that's that's new territory right there. We don't have a movie yet with a 2.5, so finally we hit a week where we don't have to play the sad game of would you rather this movie or that movie. Yeah, what order would you put these movies that you ranked 2 out of 10? <laughs> that game's horrible. Yep, so... So Eight Crazy Nights is going to sit in the 34th position, just ahead of Jimmy Neutron, which sits with a 2, and just behind Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes with a 3.5. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's about right. Planet of the Apes being way ahead of this feels good. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, that's a good spot right there for it. And there's a hard jump there from that 2.5 to a 3.5. So Yeah, that's, right, uh, right. There's yeah. a lot of room in between those two, which I like. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of room for another shitty movie to to drop in there with a three <laughs> someday. And knowing our movie going habits, I'm sure we'll have plenty more. Yeah, yeah, plenty of time for uh, something to saddle itself in right there. We just got to wait to see what movie it's going to be. The question: Could it be next week's movie, Jim? You didn't guess it in the box office. Uh, do you want to uh, run it a guess for it tonight? um spoiler alert it won't be a three <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure i know what it is because i yeah so i'm gonna guess that it's the two towers it is the two towers we're, we're finally getting back into elite territory uh we're coming full circle again at the end of 2002 this is our final 2002 movie we're about to put a bow on 2002 with the most epic movie possible the lord of the rings the two towers yeah, that movie is something else, man. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that movie is yeah. something else. So uh, we we made it through one week of dredge here with Eight Crazy Nights, and we're going to turn to an absolute heat movie, uh, the perfect way to end 2002. So make sure you join us back here next week when we dive into the illustrious Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Jim, do you got any recommendations to leave the people with this week? Nah. 
<laughs> not really i mean i rewatched twister this week that was pretty cool oh, in, like, yeah, that's in right. preparation for twisters that's right you got you got to get ready for the good stuff absolutely um yeah i don't i don't think i really have a recommendation either i haven't really i'm still just posting between watching buffy with heather and then just seeing movies in theaters but i don't really have one that really screams you should go out and see yet maybe uh maybe next week yeah i mean tw- twisters yeah, twisted, by the time twi- this episode yeah. airs twisters will be out and twisters will sure be out <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it'll hit in the recommendations category for us at some point in the next few episodes. Definitely. For sure. But all right, we turn it back to you people. Let us know down below your thoughts on this absolute Hanukkah classic. And we'll see you in the next episode. As always, we'll see you at the movies.